Well, good morning, church. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Are you excited to be here in 2024? Well, welcome. Let's go ahead and worship. Come on, let's worship him this morning. Everyone stand to your feet. Come on, let's sing it. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah. Come on. Louder than the unbelief. I raise, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. In the middle of 
Come on, let's lift our hands and let's sing this one more time. How is a hallelujah? Come on, let's worship the King. In the presence of my enemies. Come on. How is a hallelujah? Louder than. Louder than the unbelief. How is a hallelujah? Come on, let's worship. My weapon is a melody. Hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Come on, give Jesus some praise this morning as we continue worship.
up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion Come on, give Jesus some praise this morning. Let's go into the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you we could come into the house to worship you and honor you this morning. We thank you for the giving today. We thank you that is given in faith. Father, we trust you, not only in our finances, but in every area of our life. And I bind out any fear, depression, or doubt that's hovering over anyone in this room today. It has to bow to the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. Give Jesus a round of applause. Come on, and y'all guys can be seated. We have some baptisms for you this morning, amen? Baptism, so we're going to focus on the baptism today. So you can turn over to your right and, and look over there, and we're going to have four today. Here we go. This is Ellie. Ellie, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart? Yes. Turn right here. Hold your nose. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Praise Woo! Hello. We have the majority here. I have the privilege of baptizing all four of my children. The oldest one has already been baptized. And on the candlelight service, the triplets, they gave their lives to the Lord. And, uh, yeah. and they wanted to be baptized. So have you made Jesus Lord of your life? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to baptize you now. Hold your nose. There you go. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was Hannah. And I got Jace. It's harder. I'm trying to lift him up. All right. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Yes. All right. Hold your nose. And I'll baptize you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last one. (laughs) 
And this is Kyler. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Yes. All right. And I'll baptize you in your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. So good, so good. Can we get, yeah, let's give God another round of applause right there. Oops. That'll be down there when we need it. You know, we come to church to expect. Every single one of us ought to be expecting something good this morning. We got up, we came, we expected, and we saw a miracle this morning. We saw children that have been at this church who have heard the word. I'm saying they've heard the word. And we know that when we hear the word, when the truth is told, when the truth is out there, the Holy Spirit takes that truth, he takes that word, and he activates. And that's what happened. He activated with those children. And he led them into the greatest decision that they could ever make. The water is still warm. So at any time in the next 45 minutes that we're here together, you want to be baptized. You've, you've made Jesus Lord of your life and you've never been baptized. Water's, it, it's, half, it's semi-warm. It's warm enough. You can throw your clothes. It doesn't matter. Just jump in. Throw your clothes in the, in the dryer when you get home. Awesome, awesome. We're going to, first Sunday of the month, we're going to take communion. So before we get started this morning, if you would take the elements of the communion that have been placed in your seat and let's, let's uh, celebrate Holy Communion together. And I'm going to, there's two elements in here and I'm going to pray over each element. And then after I get done praying for each one, we'll, we'll take them. So let's take the bread. And this bread, and if you're a guest here with us today, thank you for being here with us today and take communion with us. It doesn't matter. Take communion with us. Let's take the bread, the bread that represents the busted and broken body of Jesus Christ that hung on the cross and died for me, and he died for you. He bled for me, and he bled for you. And he hung on that cross so that we could be here today, and he hung on that cross so that you could be righteous, that you could be in right standing, that you could be healed, that you could live in peace. That's what he went to the cross for, and that's what we celebrate this morning. We celebrate the entire package the entire package of Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this piece of bread that is just a small representation of the greatest gift that we've ever been given, and that is your son, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord and King of Kings. We celebrate that together today, corporately. And we just say, we take this bread in the name of Jesus and receive everything that he paid for. Let's take the bread. Let's take the cup. Heavenly Father, we just lift this cup up to you. The cup that represents the blood of your son that dripped for each and every one of us on that day, on the greatest day in the history of mankind. And Lord, we do not take this lightly. Lord, we receive this. His blood was for me, and it was for everyone that chooses to accept it. And we thank you for the righteousness that comes by only his blood. The blood that took away our sins. The blood that, that made us so righteously that we could stand before you and receive the things that you have for each and every one of us. So we take the cup. In Jesus' name. Man, I, take, I cannot think of a better way to start off the year 2024 by jumping in some praise and worship 
and taking communion together. Can we give God another round of applause as we get started? Some of you may be going, okay, things look different. Well, we don't have our Christmas decorations up, and we've got the praise team still up here with us. Today's going to look a little bit different. I wanted to do something a little bit different as we entered the year 2024. And I want to wish everybody here a happy new year. It is my hope and my prayer that you draw near to God in a way that you've never drawn near to God before in your life. Repeat, repeat after me. I, I am, am going, going to draw near to God. Okay, you said it. I didn't. So you have started off your year of 2024 confessing with your mouth. And we know that there is power that comes from our, the words that come out of our mouth, confessing to the one and only, the high God, that you're going to draw near to him. Do it. And that's the title of today's message. Let's do this. Let's do something different. Let's do something different corporately with one another. Let's walk together in a way that we've never walked as Encounter Church in 2024. Let's leave our prior experiences behind us. Why? Because faith is not experience. I have people tell me all the time, man, Pastor Joe, I read the word, but my experience is, quit. Your experience doesn't mean jack. I'm sorry to say that. I love you with everything that I've got, but your experience doesn't mean a hill of beans to me. The word of God is what means the most to me. Amen. And the faith in the word is what means the most to me. So I don't know who this is for this morning, but if you are relying on my experience or you're relying on your own experiences to get you through 2024, please stop. Please stop. I pray, I prayed this morning that we stop relying on our experiences and we start walking by faith, not by sight. We're going to be worship heavy. Got a quick message, and we're going to get right back into worship. You know, God revealed something to me this week that I've never heard before. In all of my studying and the online classes and listen, been into, at this church for so long, I've always heard that there's only one thing that God can't do. Some of you that have been here with me, you know that we've always said there's only one thing that God can't do. And that one thing that God can't do is he can't lie. Would you agree with me? But God revealed to me this week that there's actually two things that God can't do. Number one, he can't lie. And number two, he can't worship. Have you ever thought about that? He can't worship. What do you do when you worship? When you worship, you worship to something that's higher than yourself. What's higher than God? What would he worship to? Come on, somebody. What would he worship to? Nothing. Nothing. So what does he need us to do? He needs us to step into worship. And I want us to step into worship in a way that we've never worshipped before in, 2000, in, 20, in 2024. And I'm here to tell you this morning that there is breakthrough that comes with worship. Amen. And before I ever get started this morning, I just want you to clear your mind. I want you to do something with me. I, I want you to stop letting your circumstances and your surroundings keeping you from worshiping the way that you want to worship. I'm going to say that again. Don't let your experiences, in other words, don't let something that happened this morning or this week keep you from worshiping God. You were designed to worship don't let your circumstances, don't let the people around you keep you from worshiping God. He needs that. He desires that. He can't worship himself. So let's draw close 
to God on the first Sunday of 2024 with worship. So we're going to talk about worship, and I told you we're going to talk about the F word, and the F word is fasting. It's the fast. We're going to talk about that for a few minutes. And then when I get done, we're going to go back and we're going to draw close to God. And we're going to go into a time of worship. And we're going to create a space that is safe for you to worship the way that you've always wanted to worship. And then we're just going to let the Holy Spirit take over. And we're going to go exactly where the Holy Spirit tells us to go. You know what? The Holy Spirit may say, I'm done. We're good. Let's go. It may be 1035. That's fine. If that's what he wants to do, that's what we're going to do. But on the other hand, if he says, we're going to stay here and we're going to worship until the Cowboys play, well, that's what we're going to do too. What time do they play today? Huh? Oh, that's too long. We need to pray for the Cowboys today. Christians and, uh, yeah, uh, cowboy fans and Christians are synonymous, right? All right, we got to get started or I'll be up here. We're having fun this morning. But God is good right now. That's one thing that I want you to know right now. One thing that I want you to keep in the front of your mind for 2024 is that, yes, he's going to be good down the road. He's always been good, but God is good right now. And God has something good for us right now here at Encounter Church. You know, God didn't want us to have this service this morning. He didn't. He didn't want there to be energy. He didn't, they, 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 he didn't even want there to be music this morning. I mean, we had a snowstorm on the night that we usually practice. We had to cancel practice. And you can't have praise and worship without a good drummer, right? And we've got the best drummer in town. And I tell you what, Don, will you step out for just a second? Can we give Don a round of applause? The Holy Spirit's just leading me to go in a way this morning. Where's the microphone? You got to. Don, can I put you on the spot? I'm going to put Don on the spot for just a second. I want you to come here, Don. I want you to look. I want, I'm going to. Not weirdly, but I'm, I'm touching you. It's okay. You're real. You're here, it's right? Okay. Here, man. You got legs and knees. You got feet. This dude was in the hospital yesterday. Thursday. Thursday too, yesterday. He went in Thursday. And he's standing here today. Amen. You know, the word works. The word works. And, and Don... Goes in, I'll, I'll talk for just in just a second. He goes into the hospital and he does exactly what the word says. And each and every one of you that have been here for, for a while, you've heard me. You've heard me preach on this. And what does the word say? It says, when you need help, when you're sick and you need help, what do you do? You call upon the elders of the church. And that's what Don did. Don called upon the elders of the church. Don sent me a text and said, I need a little bit of prayer. And we just didn't pray. What did we do? We went up there. We went to room 571. And we got up there and we got in the word and we prayed and we believed that he was going to be here drumming on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody, give God a round of applause for that. Don? That was kind of a rough deal. You know, it's, uh, I've had some bouts with some gut issues in the past, and they kind of reared their ugly head again, and it's stuff that I hadn't had in a long time. I've had some surgeries that had fixed it, I thought. And uh, so I go into the hospital, and they said, I don't know if you know what it is, but it's a thing called diverticulitis, and I've had that removed and parts of me cut out before. And I said, no, I got that again. And, well, I'm, I only have one kidney, and because of the diverticulitis, I, there was some dehydration going on. Well, it raised some levels in my one kidney. And they said, yeah, we're going to keep you. And they had two bags of IV fluids pumping in me all at one time and all kinds of antibiotics. And they said, uh, we got to get this done, and we got to get your kidney function back. You know, we really don't have an extra one, so... Um, I just kind of had to lay up there and let him fill me with all kinds of fluids and drugs. And he says, I called Joe or texted Joe. Um, I let Daniel know, hey, you know, there, there could be an issue. Um, I told the doctor on Friday. He came in. He says, well, we're going to keep you one more day. And I was like, Doc, I got to go home tomorrow. I says, I got to play Sunday morning. Yeah. And uh, he goes, well, we're going to see how things go. And when he came in yesterday morning, he's like, well, you know, we could keep you. I says, no, no, no. <laughs> I says, uh, I, I got to play tomorrow. And he says, well, you know, you're good enough. You could take the meds at home. And I was like, okay. Um, so, you know, Joe McCall came. They prayed for me there. Um, you know, my wife, she, 
I had to kick her out. She <laughs> wanted to be there all the time. I'm like, baby, you can go home. We live really close to the hospital. It's not that far. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, she still loves me and wanted to be there by my side. So, but uh, I'm blessed. Um, God blessed me and just said, hey, go do your thing. Um, you know, I was just talking to Jamie a few minutes ago, and, you know, we, we've made some changes in our life. We've been in church many, many years, but every now and then you decide to make a change. You start living this way and doing this, and, and we've been discussing these changes and stuff we want to do, and then all of a sudden this happens, and then this happens. And, you know, before I left the hospital, I have gout. I got a big old gout flare up in my knee. I was on crutches yesterday when I got released from the hospital, and uh, I couldn't even walk. And so I'm like, you know, I just told her probably not 30 minutes ago, I says, we're, we're under a little attack right now, but we have to know it together. We can't just sit there and wonder, and then all of a sudden we get ugly with each other. So we have to know it together so we can attack it. So um, that's, I'm, I'm going to be on the offensive, not on the defensive. So. Awesome. Let's give God a round of applause this morning. Thank you, Don, for... Amen. It's important to be in the Word. It is important to be in the Word. So we're going to talk about worship for just a few minutes. And if you would, turn with me to Psalm 100, <laughs> verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Yeah, yeah. Man, I spent a lot of time on this verse this week going, how can I make that more simple? And I can't. Enter into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. And that is the way that we are starting the year 2024. We are going to start 2024 entering into his realm, into his kingdom, with him, with praise and thanksgiving. And why are we going to do that? Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. If nothing else, we are going to do this because the Word says that we're going to do it. Not only are we hearers of the Word, but we are now doers of the Word. And even if you don't like praise and worship, and even if you're out there going, the music's too loud, I don't like the electric guitar, I don't like the drums, too bad, we're going to worship. And the reason we're going to worship is because the Word tells us to do. And I want this, this is for somebody out there, and maybe it's for somebody online this morning, but I want you to know that blessings follow very closely to obedience. Because I've heard from more than one person at Encounter Church, that, I, and this is the words that came out of their mouth. They said, I just don't feel like I was very blessed in 2023. And I didn't have a whole lot to say to that other than, how was your obedience to the Word of God? I mean, I'm being real with you. I'm just keeping it simple. Blessings follow obedience. And if the word says, come to church, come to church. It doesn't say, it doesn't say if you want to. In Hebrews 10, 25, what does it say? It says, come to church. I didn't make that up. The Holy Spirit said that. It said, come to church. And it said, worship. So I ask yourself, ask yourself this. If you feel like you are outside of the realm of God's blessings this year, check your obedience. Really, does your obedience line up with how you saw God work in your life this year? And that's all I'm going to say about it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 says this, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You want to know how to draw close to God and keep yourself full? Get in here and worship and take it to the next level and worship in the Spirit. Singing and making melodies to the Lord of your heart. Verse 20, giving thanks always for the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So on one hand, we have worship, and I'm not going to get into the details of worship. I'm just going to say this. It's here. We need to do it. We need to be obedient to it, and God can't worship himself. We need to get here, and we need to worship. And it's just not on Sunday mornings that we need to worship. You need to worship in the shower. You need to worship while you're driving. You need to worship while you're at work. When you're not praying and you're not praying in the Holy Ghost, we need to be worshiping. Somebody hearing me this morning? In 2024, you're going to worship. You're going to worship like you've never worshipped before. You're going to take your worship to a new level. Yeah. 
Why? Because worship draws you close to God. I want to show you something about worship that I've never seen before. And I've got to be quick because I know you guys are ready to roll. It feels weird with y'all behind me. You ever get that feeling like somebody's looking at you? I've got like 10 people behind me just looking at me. I want to show you something. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. This got me really, really excited when I saw this. How many of you have heard of the story of the miracle of feeding the 5,000? Okay, a lot of people need to read their Bible before you watch the Cowboys game today. <laughs> Matthew 13. This is the, this is the story. We're not going to read it, but this is, the, the, this is what's happening. Matthew 13, 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and he sat by the sea. Verse 2. And a great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat. Stop. Highlight the word boat. Just do that right there. Circle it. Highlight it. We're going to come back to that in about 34 seconds. He got into a boat and he sat. And he sat. And the whole multitude. Okay, so here we have, this is right before the feeding of the 5,000s. The word says multitudes. We know that that was just men because the men were the only ones that were counted then. And so we know that there were women and children. There was anywhere between fifteen to 20,000 people that had gathered on the shore to hear Jesus preach. Everybody follow me? All right. Jesus got in a boat. Everybody remember that story? And he got out. Okay. I want to show you something. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 14, verse 25. Okay, this is after they fed the 5,000. This is after he tells Jesus that we're going to the other side. Look, it says, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them. I mean, what did he do? How did he get to the disciples that were crossing the other side? He walked on the water, right? He walked on the sea. That's what the word says. Go to 26, verse 26. And when the disciples saw him, what? Walking on the sea. Okay. So from those two verses, it's very easy to see that it was not an issue for Jesus to walk on the water, right? Okay. Let's go back to verse 13 2. He's preparing to preach. And the great multitudes were gathered to him, so he got into a what? He got into a boat to preach. Now, when I read this, and I've read this, I can't even tell you how many times, but this week the Holy Spirit showed me something, and I thought, wait a second, wait a second. 20,000 people were out on the shore ready for Jesus to preach, and Jesus goes and he gets on a boat. And something clicked in my little peanut brain. And what clicked was this, why did Jesus need a boat? Why did Jesus get in a boat? Have you ever thought about that? And, you know, my analytical brain started going, well, he got in a boat, and I'm sure there's a, a perfect scientific reason that if you get a certain, uh, a certain distance away from the shore, that when you speak, the acoustics off the water, you know, makes everybody, I, I, that's when my, my brain started going. And the Holy Spirit, hey, dummy, that's not why he got in the boat. The reason that he got in the boat was because of that if he would have got out and preached on the water, there would have been so many heart attacks going on, he couldn't have got his word across. Right. I'm serious. I'm serious. What would you have done if you'd have been on the shore and Jesus would have just been standing there on the water preaching? They'd have passed out. There would have been people shaking their heads. Their heads would have been going tilt. They wouldn't have understood, and the message wouldn't have got across. And what I want to say to us as we're starting to learn about worship is, is I don't want to be in that place that those people on the shore were at. If Jesus wants to show up or the Holy Spirit wants to show up in this place and start working and to do things they want to do, I don't want our heads to, heads to go tilt. I don't want us to start to doubt. we got to doubt our doubts. I just want it to believe it and I want to see it and I want to go, God is good right now. 
Do you know that people all the time, people tell me, I just want to see, I just want to see a move of the Holy Spirit. I want to see God move. You say that, and those people did too, but the fact of the matter is most people aren't ready for it. Let's be ready. Let's be ready in 2024. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but let's be a church that's ready for a movement of God in this place. And when it happens, let's don't stand there going, oh my God. Let's go praise God. That's the way it should be. We're going to be ready. And worship is going to help us draw close. And worship's going to help us be prepared when those moves start to happen that our heads don't go tilt. The story continues. All right? Jesus preaches. 20,000 people are on the shore. What happens next? The disciples go, hey, it's getting late, man. In other words, hey, we're off the clock, right? These people are hungry. What are we going to do with them? And Jesus says to feed them. So they feed them, right? They feed all these people. Now, let me tell you something. As a pastor, that would be a pretty awesome day. I can tell you that if I were able to do that just once, it would be just to experience it, it would be really cool to preach in front of 20,000 people and then go, hey, now I've fed you spiritually, now I'm going to feed you physically. I've prepared a meal for you. Everybody, let's go back to the gathering place, all 20,000 of you, let's eat. Let's break bread together. That'd be pretty awesome, right? I love I loved this next scripture, Matthew 14, 22. This happens. And it says this, Jesus says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while they sent the multitudes away. So I'm thinking right now the way my pastor brain works, I'm going, holy moly, I just ministered to 20,000 people. I just fed them. I'm coming back tomorrow, right? I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to do this again. This was fun. Are you hearing me? Did Jesus say stay? That's a pretty good crowd. Even that time, that was a pretty good crowd. And Jesus said what? We're going to the other side. Okay, we're faith people. I'm a faith people. Jesus says, hey, you know, he says, hey, you're, you're a disciple. Hey, you're going with me. Joe, I want you to get in the boat and go to the other side, right? At first, I'm like, oh, Okay, let's go to the other side. If Jesus is telling us to go to the other side, there must be pretty something pretty awesome, right? As a matter of fact, you know, if there's 20,000 people here today, we're going to get in the boat and we're going to go to the other side. You know, I bet when we get to the other side, I bet there's 100,000 people, and I bet we feed 100,000 people. Amen. Jesus said, go to the other side. What happens? They go to the other side. The whole story that we talked about a couple weeks ago, the storm comes. Jesus rebukes the storm with his peace, and this is where it starts to get good. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. You're going to get something this morning in Counter Church. How about y'all? Y'all getting something back there? Then they came to the other side of the sea, the country of the Garden. Gardenas. Now, I looked this up. This land that they went to in the Hebrew is called the land of reward. The land of reward. Remember that. So you can just see the disciples are fired up. They're getting to the land. They're like, whew, we just survived the storm. Man, this, what we're going to do on the other side is going to be the greatest thing that we've done yet. Mark chapter 5, verse 2. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there he met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Can you just see the disciples? 
we just ministered to 20,000 people. They're going across the boat, you know, and man, they're fired up and they're talking about what they're going to do here and how they're going to lay hands and they're doing all this kind of stuff. And somebody probably went, hey, Thomas, what do you think? And he's like, eh, I doubt it. You know, it's probably not going to be that many people there. <laughs> Some of you scholars probably got that. But they get to the other side expecting this big, huge crowd that they're going to minister to. And what happens? One dude shows up. One guy shows up. Now, as a pastor, that hurt my heart a little bit. Going, okay, God, I was in this awesome place. I was ministering to 20,000 people. You put me on a boat. You almost got me killed. And I came over here to minister to 50,000 people. And one dude's here. Verse 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been found with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, Not 50,000 people, not 100,000 people, but one person. Some texts suggest that this guy had up to 1,500 <coughs> demons living inside of him. You think you've done something bad? You think you've got some unclean spirit in you? I can't even think of 1,500 ways to mess up, but this guy somehow did it, and he had him inside him. One man. Jesus gets out of the boat, and it says, when this man with the unclean spirit saw Jesus from afar, he ran, and he worshiped him. You need to highlight that. He worshipped him. I know I'm going longer than I said I was going to. I'm not even halfway done. This is supposed to go faster today. This is for somebody in this place, and maybe it's for me. Jesus and his disciples, you need to catch this, left the greatest revival in the history of the Bible, crossed the sea to draw close to one person that worshiped him. Come on now, somebody. One person. Somebody's in here right now going, this is year 2024. I can't do it anymore on myself. I need to draw close to God. But how do I draw close to God? This guy was full of demons. That's why I said this morning, don't let your circumstances keep you from worshiping. Because I promise you, your situation and your circumstances don't look anything like this guy's. Yet Jesus went to him because he was willing to worship him. That one person is you. That one person is me. Now, I want to throw a little caveat in here. This is a side note. Under Levitical law, High priests could not go into tombs, into cemeteries. They couldn't. Jesus was a high priest. And this is for somebody again this morning. Maybe this is for you online. And I want you to think this because I've thought it myself. Jesus, I am here. Can't you just come wrap your arms around me? Oh, wait a second. But the Holy Spirit showed me something this week.
Jesus left the crowds, got on a boat, fought the seas, and came to you. He couldn't go into the cemetery where this guy lived. This is what I want you to get out of this. Stop waiting for Jesus to come the whole 100. At some point, you've got to go meet him. At some point, you've got to get out of the cemetery, walk through the gates of the cemetery, and go put your arms around him. I don't know who that's for this morning. But this man's worship held back 2,000 demons. There's power in that. I'm looking for a church that's ready to step out of the cemetery and to meet Jesus where he's at. We always say, Jesus will meet you where he's at. He will. But we got to walk through the gates of the cemetery. So we're going to worship like we've never worshiped before. And we're going to fast. Real quickly, I want to talk about fasting. I am inviting you, Encounter Church, and those of you that are watching with us online, to join me and McCall in a fast this week. Real quickly, the definition of fasting from the Hebrew is this, is to abstain from taking food in. Take that how you want it. But fasting allows us to draw close to God. Fasting allows us to hunger for God. Fasting does three things. It becomes a weapon. It produces faith in turn that produces the supernatural, and it draws us close to God. So this is what McCall and I are going to do. We're going to pray about it this afternoon, and we're going to ask God how long he wants us to fast. And then we're going to ask him, when does he want us to fast? And we're going to fast this week. Because I want to draw close to God. I want God to touch me in a way that he's never touched me before this year. And I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship, and I'm going to fast. And I can't think of a better time to fast. We're throwing all the junk away when we get home. But I love what Cody said. When you fast, remember Jesus, because if you're not, you're just on a diet. So I invite you, I invite you, worship with me this week, fast with me this week. And let's come in here next Sunday and the Sunday after that and the Sunday after that. And let's be prepared to see the supernatural at work. Thank you for that. I'm not going to make you turn there. I'm going to have you stand to your feet. But the story of the prodigal son, you all remember that story? Takes his inheritance, he squanders his inheritance. And what happens? We have a Jew that ends up working with the hogs. And in the scriptures, you can go to Luke and you can read this. In the scriptures, he said, I am so hungry. If I could even eat what the pigs were eating, I'd do it. I'd eat anything that anybody gave me. That's how hungry I am. He even goes on to say, he said, my father's servants eat better than I'm eating right now. And the next scripture after that, oh, thanks, guys. See, I got good guys in the back. 18, I will rise and I will go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you, heaven and before you. Sometimes we got to get a little bit hungry. Sometimes we got to get out of our comfort zone so that we can draw close to him. So I invite you, if you feel comfortable doing that, to pray about it. McCall and I are going to do it. Because I'm drawing close. Oh. 
we're going to go into a time of worship. I just showed you how worship can become your breakthrough. Who needs a breakthrough in this place this morning? Come on, somebody. Who knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that needs a breakthrough, even though they're not him? Worship for him. Stand in the gap for him. And let's worship. And Holy Spirit, thank you for your word this morning. We're being led by you. And we're going to worship. We're going to get to a place of the worship in here in a few minutes. And I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit what he wants us to do. And we're going to go from there. Let today be your breakthrough moment. Amen. Let's worship him like we haven't before in 2024. Come on, let's worship Jesus this morning. This altar is open if you want to come down. Let's do something we've never done before when we worship the King. Do something you've never done. Here we go. Yeah. I searched the world. Come on, let's declare today. But it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise treasures that faith. Are never enough. You came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Come on, let's declare today.
Sing that again. Let's just jump in. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, let's declare that for 2024 this year. Let's lift our hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We lift our hands as an act of surrender to Him and to deny our flesh. Because our flesh doesn't want to serve, doesn't want to worship God, doesn't want to serve God. Let's declare this again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Yes. Oh, there's nothing better than there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Yes, Jesus. Come on, let's worship him. on the Holy Spirit's moving this morning just embrace his presence this morning as we're here and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord come on and all the
restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we meeting about today, our praise team, I said, I need 12 to 15 minutes. That's why they were sitting at the back. And they chuckled at me. They really did. Some of them dawned and they laughed at me. Here we are. So we're already here. We know the Cowboys play at three. We got time. I want to ask you something that the Lord has imparted on me. that you're in this place. And I say you because I'm speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is speaking through me to you right now. And he said, you're stuck in your cemetery. I'm gonna say it to this side. Man, don't you just love how truthful the Holy Spirit is? He says, you're stuck in your cemetery. Open the gate. So everybody do this. Open the gate. However it looks. You've opened the gate. You've done the hard part. But one of them. And I'm asking you, we just saw in Scripture how this man needed a breakthrough. Somebody that is in this place this morning, you're stuck in your cemetery and you need a breakthrough and the key is worship. And I'm going to ask you, if you've never come down and you've never worshiped with me personally, I'm asking you as a personal favor to step out of the cemetery, come down here. If you've never done this, if you've never done that before, stand by me hand in hand and let's walk through the gates of the cemetery together so that you can receive your breakthrough and go to Monday. Who is that in this place? And I had a strong, and I know that I'm not missing it. Who is that in this place? Who's ready to do something they've never done before and to receive a breakthrough that they've never? Who is that? Who's going to come worship with me right now? Who is that person in this place? Who is it? Yeah, I see it. Come on, let's go. I'm ready for those people who are ready for a breakthrough. Let's do this. Yeah. 
Breakthrough is here. It is here for those that are ready to receive it. We've already talked about, we've already seen how God's word is true and it is good. God is good right here at 1116. So if you're ready for some of that goodness, come down here. I'm going to be bold this morning. I'm fixing to come to get some of you. We've got one more song. I don't know, the Holy Spirit may say we got 10 more songs. But in our plan, we got one more song. Don't let this breakthrough slip through your fingers this morning. Here we go. For those of you that are ready and comfortable, just begin to worship Him. Hallelujah, we thank you how good you are. Just begin to worship in the Spirit. Walk through the gates. Here we go. Cody.
Place. Look what God's doing right here, right now. This is Encounter Church. Church started seven minutes ago. <laughs> Scripture tells us that Jesus came. He came to bear peace. And I want you to know that I just want to speak the peace of God over each and every one of you. I desire and I believe that peace dominates your soul in the way that it dominated Jesus. And that with peace comes authority. And with breakthrough, you're now free and you stand here righteous because of what Jesus did on the cross for us to exhibit that authority in our lives outside of these doors. Is there even another song? Go to Let It Rain. And here's what's going to happen. Scripture tells us that the government was going to be placed on his shoulders, and it tells us how Jesus was going to reign in this place, how he's going to reign in the physical, and how he's going to reign in the spiritual. And the Scripture says that every tongue will confess, and every knee will bow, and encounter church, and every knee will bow in Amarillo, and in this state, and in this country. Let your authority reign. Let it reign in this place. Just begin to worship him. Lift up your spirit. Lift up your voice. Let it reign. begin to lift your worship up to him as we come to a time of closing if there's anything that you want to say to him before you leave this place today say it and I want to say this for those of you that walked through the gates of the cemetery do this with me just like I used to do in front of my students close the gate behind you. Just do it. Just close the gate behind you. Now put a lock on it. To get back in there, you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to cut the lock or you're going to have to jump the fence. And if you do that, that's on you. 
that's not God's will for you. So Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Christ. And Lord, we just lift you up. We love you. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We thank you for this time of worship and word. We thank you for the encounter that we've had with you today. Lord, we thank you that this encounter leads to transformation, transformation that leads us into the year of 2024. Lord, thank you that you have shown us what the culture of encounter church looks like. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is free to move in this place anytime that we are here. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. They're gonna continue to pray. If you need prayer, if you make Jesus Lord of your life, we're gonna be here. We love you guys. We'll see you next week, 10 o'clock. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Encounter Online family. We hope that you enjoyed the word. We hope that you had your own encounter with God today. Now go out there and have a great week. And also remember, there are three ways to give here at Encounter Church. One is through our website, encounteramarillo.com slash give. Or you can download our app in the app store, Encounter Church. Or you can text to give. Now we hope that you guys have a great week. May God be with you.